To create a character in the fantasy role-playing game, Dungeons & Dragons, you must roll four dice at a time, then take three highest of them to get one stat, repeating the process five more times to get the sequence of numbers that you will then use to fill out your character sheet. There are six abilities that you can place your numbers in, such as Strength, Dexterity, Constitution, Intelligence, Wisdom, and Charisma. The higher the number in your ability score, the better you are at said ability. From there, you decide on a race and class, there being nine races and twelve classes, with each race increasing different ability scores by one or two, and each class determining whether you prefer to use melee weapons or magical abilities. Then, you build the character up, giving him or her a backstory, quirks, and motivations to give reasoning as to why you met with your adventuring team, and why they're growing on this great quest in the first place. Or, if you feel too lazy to do all of that, you can simply go to the back of the player's manual and design a personality from there. Yet, from what it seems, your dice rolls and the name you'd give to your character are the only things that give inference as to who created that character, and, even then, there's still a possibility that out of 1,236 dice rolls, someone could roll similar stats and end up with an entirely different character. All of this fostered the question to me that, while D&D is just our fictional characters engaging in a narrative comprised by the Dungeon Master, and reacting to what the DM may throw at us by rolling dice and adding bonuses in an effort to keep them dying, how much different is the collective we in the development of our bodies and in the off-the-cuff randomness of our actions and experiences? I ask this question because writer Ben Steen from the website Inside Science expresses, in his straightforwardly titled article, Dice Rolls Are Not Truly Random, that dice rolls subscribe to a pseudo-randomness, since, by technicality, due to the fact that all of life seems to be built around technicalities and refutations, rolls can be precisely depicted by knowing the specifics of the starting conditions of a throw in this environment to an excessively accurate, if highly impractical, degree. Although the many few playing D&D will still continue to play, including myself, even in spite of our dice rolls being a sort of pseudo-random, this raises bigger philosophical dilemmas than one might realize. We, much like the characters one might build in D&D, are determined by probabilistic factors that are beyond our control. Our bodies are merely shaped by our genetic makeup and the nutrients we consume while developing, and our minds shaped heavily in part by our experiences. We always carry a reminiscence of our creators while splashing in our own personalities and quirks. We find meanings in life, not from great quests and fantastical adventures, but through other people and the struggles of working towards a sustainable career so that we may be able to eventually achieve those riches we fantasize about while role-playing. Who is to say that this universe we inhabit is any more real than those we create in our minds? And, in another takeaway, how predictable are we as human beings? From this view, it can cause one to ask, if we knew the specifics of our mother's vaginal walls and the consistency of our father's sperm, would we be able to predict which sperm would fertilize the egg, and furthermore, be able to accurately tell that you were the baby to be born? With all the information given, and an omission of some details I'm leaving the imagination, it feels that the answer to this question would be yes. We, as human beings, are predictable, yet it is this debilitating lack of information on a grander scale about societal and environmental factors that gives life a sense of randomness, so to speak. This isn't to say that predictable means precise and true every single time, but taking into account the margin of error, our actions and experiences can be explained by our, our logical, ethical, and emotional values, which is why our forms of communications can be streamlined into pathos, logos, and ethos. Taking all this into mind, I couldn't help but take it a bit personally when thinking about my life experiences from a naturally pessimistic perspective. It was all just a predictable chance that I would be born. It was all just a predictable chance that I would suffer from anxiety issues that caused me to bomb in social situations involving food. It was just a predictable chance that my dog would eat poisonous seeds that would cause her liver to fail and force us to put her down just nearly a month ago. It was just a predictable chance that my parents would end up divorced due to their relationship being a crutch for each other and a reasoning to start a family. Much like it was a predictable chance that I would break up with my own girlfriend because our relationship was spawned from proximity and infatuation until neither of us could emotionally handle each other any longer. These experiences mirror those of the people around me while differing slightly in the specifics of it. From that viewpoint, the individual, in this situation, being myself, can feel hopeless and empty, knowing that they can never truly be sure of anything and yet everything is possible in their mind due to, as Professor Dave Lane expresses in a short film Brain Burn, its ability to play out specific scenarios in our head without dealing with any of the emotional or physical harm that may come from our desires. It's at times like these where an intelligence level of 20 would be extremely helpful in dissecting the probability that makes up our decisions, if they can even be called our decisions. And yet, even with the predictability of our actions due to our emotions, we may still be even more fantastical and mysterious than those fictional creations made in Gary Gygax's realm. As it currently stands and is heavily discussed in our Introduction to Philosophy class, we still know so little about the known universe that it's almost laughable to contemplate just what is true about ourselves. Other than the fact that our thoughts are nothing more than synapses firing off in our brain as a result of chemical reactions on the molecular level, 
The mystery of our minds challenges the brightest of us to ask just how we are able to contemplate life itself rather than worry about our survival from day to day against the wilderness. While the probability that dictates our universe has the potential to drag us down into the depths of depression, it also provides the exhilaration of discovery and the contemplation of just why we are able to think in the ways that we do. So, rather than dwell on my experiences as a result of the coldness of chance, I can find comfort and, maybe, even hope in the unknown and the probability of the universe. Kinda in the same way you'd slay a mind flare that means to devour your brain to seal his riches. Except, maybe a bit less dangerous.